realize the deadline's tonight. Of course I'm on schedule. When am I ever not on schedule? <laughs> no problem. What? You need stats on Georgia and Oregon prisons, too? <sighs> yeah, okay, fine, no problem. Mm -hmm. Bye. Megan? What? How come you're not dressed yet? The bus is gonna be here any minute. I can't find my purple jeans. Well, put something else on. Come on, I don't have time to drive you to school today. I don't want to put something Megan, else on. Megan, please. Morning, Grandpa. Morning, Megan. Morning, Julie. Good morning, Dad. Oh, listen, I'm gonna be late tonight, so I need you to pick Megan up at the bus stop. Also, I made chicken. All you've got to do is stick it in the microwave. Hot date with Sam tonight? Husband and wife belong together. I am only going to be working late. Megan? You work too hard. I heard you typing at 2 o'clock in the morning. I've got a deadline. People are counting on me. I've got to get the stats on overcrowding prisons in 12... Uh, no, make that 14 states now. You have enough to worry about. You didn't have to move in here to take care of me. I'm just fine on my own. I didn't move in here to take care of you, Dad. I moved in here because I don't like being all alone late at night. Megan, come on! Now get your jacket. You're gonna miss your bus. I already did. All right, come on, I'll drive you. Bye, Grandpa. Dad, your oatmeal's on the table. I hate oatmeal. See you tomorrow. Good night, Julie. What are you doing here? I'm leaving for Washington in an hour. Can I take Megan next weekend instead? Fine. Julie, I think we should talk. Sam, I really don't have time for an argument. Why right do you always assume we're going to have an argument? I am not the one who spent a cozy weekend with my editor's secretary. All right, all right. I messed up. Big time, but it's been three months. Excuse me. Hey, Nancy, do you think you can take one more thing there? Nothing I'd love better. Oh, hello, Sam. Hi, Nancy. I love you. I'm late. I have to be at the State House by 3.30. You still have every minute accounted for, don't you? That's right. I forgot about that. You're perfect. You don't make mistakes. Don't be stupid. It must be exhausting being you. And you have no idea how exhausting it is trying to keep up with you. <laughs> You're okay. What's going on? Oh, my God. Did I hit anyone? No. They all jumped out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Megan? By the time the hospital reached, she was asleep. Mrs. Morelli, from next door. She's sitting with her. Oh, God, Dad, it was awful. 
I was just driving along listening to the music and all of a sudden everything got really blurry and then my head felt like it was gonna burst. Yeah, nothing. We worked too hard. I told you that a hundred times. Try to do too much. I tried to reach Sam, but I got the machine, so I hung up. Don't call Sam. Let me use your husband. I'm going to be out of here in no time. I don't want him to worry. I think he'd like to know. <sighs> He's out of town till Friday. Hi. I'm Dr. Fowler. Last time I saw you, you were looking pretty groggy. <sighs> I don't remember. I know. Well, we have a few things to talk over. I'm her father. She's going to be all right. Yes. Well, I like to go with the positive. She drove into a bus shelter. Now she's awake and talking. That's a good sign. Dad, maybe you should get back in case Megan wakes up. I'll bring her tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. You didn't exactly answer his question, did you? Well, I like to know what's going on before I start passing out reassurances. You know, I was thinking that this has to have something to do with all the pressure I've been under lately. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Well, we're gonna run a few tests and get to the bottom of it, okay? Okay. Are you okay? Can I give you a hug? Of course you can. I'm fine, honey. Oh. I brought you something. <laughs> look! Thank you. No, look here. What, 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 what? No serious injuries as car takes out shelter. Okay. My class thinks it's really cool, too. None of the other moms have been in the paper before. Great. This is just what I needed. When Dad sees this, he'll freak. Then he'll be home for good. Honey, I don't... Hours are over. Would all visitors please leave now? Next we just got here. My fault. I hit every red light in town. It's okay. Megan, come on. Let's let your mother get some rest. No, I want to stay. I'm making her a bracelet. Oh, honey, I'll get you some ice cream. You know I'm allergic to milk. Well, we'll get some donuts instead. <laughs> it's okay, honey. I'm going to be home real soon, okay? Okay. I love you. Ditto. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Don't worry. We'll take good care of each other. I know you will. I better get going. Your tests show that you have an inflammation of the arteries of the brain. In other words, something blocked the blood supply, and that's why you blacked out. But I came to again, so the blockage stopped, right? Right. My concern is that it not happen again. Because the next time, the blockage could be far more dangerous. Possibly life-threatening. The most effective thing to do would be surgery. I would go in and bypass the blocked artery, take a clear channel, and move the blood through that. Like a heart bypass? Mm-hmm, exactly. When do you want to do this? I'd like to book you in next week. That soon? I'll be frank with you, Julie. You could walk out of here and this might not happen again for a few months or even a few years. On the other hand, you could be driving your child to school next week and it could happen again. Okay, let's do it. Good. All I need is some family history. If there's any hereditary tendency towards stroke, I can't operate. No, no one in my family's had a stroke that I know of. 
Great. You simply have to find out. I'd be happy to call your father and check it out if you like. No, you can't just call him and tell him something like this. Listen, I, I, I'm feeling a lot better. Can I just get out of here and go tell him myself? Okay, but take it easy. No driving. You're home. The doctors let you out of the hospital. You're going to be fine, yes. Sure. Oh, huh. oh, I wanted to get home before Megan got back. I was so worried. You know how my mind works since your mother? I thought maybe it was cancer, some sort of tumor. No, Dad, it's not cancer. Uh, the hospital does need to know a few things about the family. What sort of things? Oh, you know, just medical stuff for the records. Records, that's how they make their living, filling out forms. Well, the doctor needs to know if anyone in the family ever had a stroke. I must have filled out a million forms for your mother. It's a bit more complicated than that. I, uh, need an operation. Why? What's wrong? No, it's just a minor procedure, but you know how they are? They... Just need to know a little family medical history. You know, easy stuff, like, uh, well, what did my maternal and paternal grandparents die of? I don't know. What? What do you mean? That's your mother and father. How could you not know that? Okay, okay, look, let's just break this down. Um, uh, how old were you when my grandmother, your mother, died? Let's just start there. It's none of their damn business. Daddy, if I don't find this out and I don't have this operation, I could die. You said it wasn't serious. You said it was nothing. I know. I didn't want to worry you. Julia, I wish I had some answers that I could help you. But I can't. Why not? You better sit down. I don't want to sit down. Come on, you're scaring me. We... Your mother and I couldn't have children. Doris couldn't carry. So finally, when there were no more chances, we adopted. years and you never told me we thought it was for the best easier for all of us we loved you as if you were our own i don't believe it we were frightened that your real parents would someday show up take you away how could you do this to me How could you lie to me all these years? You used to say that my hair was just like your sister's. Mom said that I looked like Aunt Ethel. Remember, around the eyes? Around the eyes, you looked exactly... Oh. So when were you going to tell me? When was it going to be all right? Tomorrow was the best answer I could come up with. Well, that was the wrong answer. I know. 
It doesn't change anything. You're still a girl. It doesn't change anything. I had a right to know. Julia, I don't know who your real parents are. We, we never knew their name. All the years I spent frightened that you'd find your real parents. Now I'm terrified that you won't. <laughs> Is this my real birth certificate? Yes. They put our names in as parents, but that's the time and place that you were born. Well, oh, I've got something. How did you get me so young? I couldn't have been more than a few hours old here. By the time we decided to adopt, we couldn't qualify. So we had to look for other ways. So, I wasn't legal. We had a lawyer draw up the adoption, but he wouldn't tell us anything about your mother. And you didn't bother to ask? We didn't press on it because we were afraid that it wouldn't come through. So, my um, mother and father could have been anyone. I wish Mom was here. So do I. She used to sing me to sleep. Every night, the same song. Let me call you sweetheart. What was this lawyer's name? Where was his practice? Bill Curtis. Right here in Seattle. There was uh, nobody out there. Yes, I'm uh, between secretaries. Uh, do we have an appointment? Actually, uh, I think I'm looking for Mr. Curtis Sr. Uh, my father passed away two years ago. Oh. Um, can I help you? Hate to say it, but this stuff might not show up. So for the last two hours, we've been looking for a file that doesn't even exist? Maybe. And yeah, maybe not. The only thing in the world Dad was scared of was the IRS. What we have here is a receipt for five months bed and board at Kendall's rooming house. The bill was paid on behalf of a Mrs. Frances Thompson of Cloverton, British Columbia, dated August of 1965. I was born August 24th, 1965. Funds dispersed from loss and payment. Dad must have paid for this woman's lodgings with funds from the adoptive parents. Look at this. Hospital bills paid from the same source. Hmm. He paid her bills while she was waiting to have her baby. Me. Frances Thompson. Cloverton, British Columbia, in Canada. Megan wanted to surprise you. Did you find out anything? I have to take a trip to a place called Cloverton. I think my birth mother might live up there. A trip? No, Julie, I don't know. I have to go, Dad. I already called work and told them I'd be gone for a few days. Let me go for you. No, I have to do this. This isn't just about medical records anymore. It's about me, who I am. I don't think this is a very good I need idea. you to take care of Megan. Of course. Okay, I'm gonna go tuck her in. Mm. Mom? Hi. Where were you? I had to do a couple of things. Listen, I have to be away for a little while. No. No, I have some business that I gotta take care of. Everything's gonna be fine. Why don't you roll over and try and go back to sleep? 
I can't sleep now. Sure you can. Hey, look. Smokey's already snoring. Don't go till I'm asleep. Of course I won't. Come on, roll over. Can we sing? Mm-hmm. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. Keep, Keep the, the love light glowing in your eyes so true. Taxi, miss? Yeah, I do. You got any luggage? Uh, the green bag. Okay. Thanks. Well, what strands you in Cloverton? Visiting a relative, maybe? Maybe. Can't think of any other reason to come here. Ain't exactly Vegas, eh? <laughs> So, uh, who are you visiting? Mrs. Frances Thompson. Used to be a school teacher? That Frances Thompson? I had her for three years. Were you uh, close to her? What do you mean, where? Mm, she passed away last October. I'm sorry. If it's any consolation, they didn't know what hit them. It was a bunch of kids drinking, speeding. They jumped the light and totaled the car. I'd kill them both right away. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, well, her husband was killed, too. Their daughter's the only one left in the family. Hmm. Daughter? What's her name? Beth? Beth Thompson? She runs Beth's beauty place. And how old is she? Hard to tell. Somewhere over 40. And Mrs. Thompson, the one that was killed? Oh, that I know. That was in the papers. 75 on the nose. It was the daughter.
Well, I'll see you in three weeks then. You bet. Have fun. Bye bye. Hi. Hi. Are you Beth Thompson? That's me. What can I do for you? You have great hair. What's so special about it? It's so thick, healthy. I've always had the kind of hair that just sort of hangs there. Ooh. Oh, sorry. It's always doing that. One of these years, I'm gonna have to get it fixed. There. Okay. So, where are you from? Seattle. Have you ever been there? No, nope, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> Born here, raised here. Be buried here, I expect. Want some coffee? Yeah, sure. Do you have any kids? No, not me. No husband, no kids. Milk? No thanks, I'm allergic. This way. Now, I've told you all about me. What about you? Do you have any kids? Oh, uh, yeah, one. A daughter, Megan, she's eight. Oh, it's a sweet age. I do a lot of kids' hair. It always makes me so happy when I get one that age. They love to pretend they're all grown up and they can't wait to get a lollipop. So, what brings you here? All right, um... A few days ago, I found out that I'm... Hey, Beth. Hey. Things are looking up. You got a new customer? Oh, Sue. Do you have time for a quick shampoo? I gotta be at the restaurant soon. But you always get your hair done on Thursdays. Well, this week I'm going to be different. So can you do it? Sure. I'm just about finished here. Huh? What do you think? It's great. Thanks. Your hair looks real pretty. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That'll be $12.50. Thank you. Oh, keep the change. Well, that won't be necessary. I'm the owner here. Thank you. Well, goodbye. Bye-bye. Megan, just the daughter I wanted to talk to. Have I told you that I love you today? No. Mom, can I have a puppy? Jackie's dog had eight. Absolutely not. I don't care how many puppies Jackie's dog had. But... No. Nope. End of subject. Now, do you have anything else you want to tell me? I got an A-plus on my story about your accident. Mom, when are you coming home? Honey, I just... I don't care. Granddad says it's my bedtime. I told him I have never in my life gone to bed this early. Megan, listen to him a little, okay? But he argues about everything. I do not. Do too. Now, give me the phone. Let me talk to your mother. Only if you let me stay up. Give... Megan. It's okay. I love you, Mom. Julie. Did you find anything? Not much. You know, I think it'd be a good idea if... Listen, Dad, I really need to get some sleep, okay? I gotta go. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.
Gosh, I don't know. She's more the sort that gets postcards, not the kind that sends them. Are you sure? Could she have taken a holiday and you didn't know? How come you're asking me all this? Why don't you just ask Beth? Order up. I'll leave the pot here in case you want some more. Beth Thompson's going to be back in our hair again, fresh from the graduating class of the Marvell School of Beauty in Seattle. I figured you'd be back. Sue tells me you've been asking questions about me. Who are you? My name is Julie Lawson, and I'm sick. I need to have an operation, but they can't do it until I find out if there's a history of strokes in my family. I'm, I'm very sorry to hear about that. But what does it have to do with me? I think you can help me. I don't see how. I was born in Seattle in 1965. I think I'm your daughter. I don't have a daughter. I've never been married. I don't have any children. I told you that. I know. You also said that you've never been to Seattle. But I know that you were there in 1965. Oh, well, I don't count that. I was there for a while in eating school. But as soon as that was over, I came right back. I spoke with a lawyer named Bill Curtis who said that his father arranged everything. I've never heard of any Bill Curtis. Look, I don't want to upset you. Believe me, I would not have come here if I didn't have to, but I have no choice. I have a daughter, and she needs her mother. If I don't have the operation, I may die. I'm sorry. I'd like to help you. I've been to Seattle, but I've never had a child. I was uh, just about to close up here.
took the baby away so fast, I never knew if I had a boy or a girl. I just heard you cry. No one in my family has ever had a stroke. Wait, wait. What made you decide to tell me? stare at you. It's just so new to me. I was just trying to see if I look like you. Me too. Over the years, I've wondered. What about my father? Who is he? Please. As soon as I find out, I'll go. I don't want to disrupt his life. I don't want anything from him except a little bit of information. But I have to know. I'm so sorry. I can't tell you that. Not a lot about me. I'm a researcher. It's what I do for a living. You're good at it. Did you take ballet lessons? What? I know it's a silly question. It's just that I thought if I ever had a little girl, I'd get her some ballet lessons. Actually, I did study ballet when I was small, but um, I wasn't very coordinated. <sighs> Who are they? We were all in the same class. Can you tell me about them? This is Tim Webster. He was always the class clown. The teachers all hated. He was smart and rude. This is Jake Gibson. He's dead now. He was married to Sue. She's always been my best friend. And this is Del Smith. He had this look all through high school, as if he was really depressed. Never smiled. And uh, Matthew Saunders. He came from some farm somewhere. He stayed in town, boarded. Everyone was so excited about the big dance. Can you tell me about that night? I'd looked forward to it all year. When I walked in, it was magic. The gym was perfect. I felt like Cinderella. Come on!
Everybody was dancing, except for me. I didn't have a date. Jake and Sue had been going steady all year. Everybody knew they'd get married. Sue was always my best friend. She noticed me standing there alone. Tim and Jake had their own idea of fun. Matt was the only one the 60s really got to. He didn't bother with drinking. He was into drugs. Del was alone. Del had brought a flask and all the boys started drinking. I took a sip. It burned my tongue. It was the worst thing I ever tasted in my life. That was enough for me. And then the principal spotted us, and we were out of the dance. I was so embarrassed. We ended up at the roadhouse. I was having the best night of my life. Just going to a place like that was a big deal to me. I felt pretty. The guys got the barman to refill their flask. Everybody was getting kind of rowdy. I told Dale to keep his hands to himself. Tim got so angry with him. Sue and Jake headed off. The rest of the gang said they'd walk me home, but I just wanted to get back fast, to be alone with my memories of the night. Dale wouldn't stop apologizing. And I remember Tim saying he wouldn't let me go without a goodnight kiss. Someone called my name. I knew it was one of the boys, but I couldn't see him properly. Each time I catch a glimpse of him, he'd vanish. I thought, maybe he was playing some kind of game. Whatever it was, I didn't like it.
I remember. I have to go. Beth, you have nothing to be ashamed of. It wasn't your fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't remember anymore, and I don't think I ever will. Please, you have to try. We've got to find these guys. Talk to them. Somebody's got to remember something. Now, I know that Jake is dead. Matt, Tim, Dell, where are they? My Matt disappeared. Tim moved away. Never came back. If it had been up to me, I would have kept you. Good morning. Hi, it's Julie for Nancy. Hello? Nance, I need a favor. I need it fast. Okay. There's a guy from here, Matt Saunders, moved to Portland in the 60s, hasn't been heard from since. I need a current address. Right. Not only fast, also impossible. I'm faxing you his high school yearbook photo. He'll be fast? You got it. Oh, thanks, Nance. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Matt Saunders missing. Jake Gibson is married to Sue, dead. Tim Webster, need to locate. Del Smith. Lots of people want to buy a sensible car. I tell them they don't need a sensible car. Cars aren't sensible. They burn fossil fuels are dangerous. It's far more sensible to walk or take the train. What do people say when you tell them that? Nothing. People don't listen. I just talk to hear myself. Why are you so nervous? A pretty little girl like you shouldn't have a care in the world. I had an accident last week. I totaled my Jeep. No kid. So how come you came to Clover to buy a new car? I told you I'm here on vacation. People on vacation never buy new cars. Too far away from home. Not sensible. Besides, no one on vacation ever came to Clover. So why are you here? Okay, I'll tell you. I'm a researcher, and I'm gathering information for an article about what happens to people after they graduate from high school? Beth Thompson suggested I talk to you. Beth? Mm-hmm. Beth hasn't said boo to me in 25 years. Now she sends you here to ask me questions? Tell you what. High school seems so long ago. Why don't we just pull over the side of the road here and take a little trip down memory lane? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing yet. I just want to get to know you a little better, that's all. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> Need to sit down. Oh. Huh. Del. 
Bell came on to me. What? And then he just dumped me in the middle of nowhere. <sighs> my mother used to brush my hair when I was little. Every night, she'd count out a hundred strokes. She passed away a year ago. Sometimes the smallest thing will happen and I run to the phone to tell her and I remember. Did you ever think about me? Every year, at the same time, I get this feeling that something was missing. And then August the 24th, I'd know why. My birthday. I didn't know where you were or who you'd be. But I knew it was your birthday. Yes, uh, she is. Just a second. It's for you. It's a little girl. Oh, it's Megan. I left this number. She likes to call me after school. Hi, baby. Mommy, I miss you so much. Oh. Honey, don't cry. I'll be home soon. That's what you said last time, and you're still not home. Well, I still have some things to find out. It's important. Nothing's that important. I need you. Megan, are you listening to me? Okay, I'm gonna tell you something because I need you to help me while I'm here. Help? What for? When I saw the doctor, she told me that I need to have an operation. No one told me that. Well, I didn't want to upset you. Now, here's what I need you to do. I need you to try and be a brave girl. Can you do that? I am a brave girl. <laughs> I know. And I want you to talk to Granddad. I don't want to upset him. When I was little, and I'd get real sad, you know who could always make me smile? Granddad. That's right. He won't mind if you cry. Okay. Now let me talk to Granddad. I'll make her smile. Thanks, Dad. Bye. Bye. Sure, right? Come on. Let's get out of here. Stop thinking about it. I have to walk. It helps. How about you? Is it all getting to you now? Getting to both of us, I'd say. I'm gonna see Tim Webster. Talk to him. You walk like Megan. I can't keep up with her either. We've got to keep looking for Matt, too. When I came back from Seattle, I did a lot of walking. I'd come out here. Look over the water and dream about other places. I'd stop here and pretend the road didn't go any further. It's 
the matter? Nothing. Ball? Damn it! Come on, tell me. Sue, so, do you remember that night after the dance? What dance? The homecoming dance, our senior year. You're asking me to think back that far? I can't remember what I was doing last week. The big homecoming dance. The one we were thrown out of because of Dell's flask. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. You and Jake went on ahead. Yeah. I stayed behind with the rest of the gang at the beach. And Jake proposed the very next morning. Something happened that night. <laughs> Mama said I should forget it ever happened. She usually got her way, that woman. Do you realize that if Julie hadn't come here, you would have gone to your grave with this? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I wish I would have been there, and I wish I could have done something. You don't have any idea who it was? I've tried. I've tried. I can't remember. I thought maybe you might have noticed something. Or maybe Tim will. Julie went to see him. All I can remember is that you wanted me to stay and I didn't. Oh, jeez. You've been through so much. Maybe you've suffered enough. Maybe you should just let it all go. I can't. Not now. But it was such a long time ago. So, Tim, Beth tells me you didn't like school. Like it? <laughs> I hated it. I haven't been to a reunion yet. You want to put this in your article? I believe that a terrible school can help a man succeed. You want some more tea? Yes, please. Uh, how? Oh, it's easy. See, if it had been all that good, teachers would have understood me. I probably would have been one of the teacher's pets. And I would have achieved all that I wanted to in school. So that after school, would have been nothing left to prove. Here's a good quote for you. I hated that school with all my heart. If you hated it so much, mm -hmm. and uh, how come you have all these pictures? Oh, oh. <laughs> Beth, wasn't she beautiful? <laughs> huh? I kind of had a crush on her. And I thought she looked my way a couple of times, too. But then she changed. I see. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. It, it used to be that Beth felt something. You could read it all over her face like a billboard. You know? Then she changed. Oh. Hey, boys, boys. Hey. No hockey playing in the house. Get out of here. Go on. Uh. <laughs> Your son looks just like you, the elder one. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Everybody says that. <laughs> They're my wife's kids from a previous marriage. We didn't have any kids. Why not? Well, I couldn't. I had mumps when I was 13. You know what that can do to guys. Not that I can't, you know, I, I just can't make kids. I'm sorry. Oh, hell, I don't care. My boys know I'm their daddy. Uh, are you going to see Beth when you go back? Hmm? Well, you tell her that uh, Tim Webster says hi. I will. I'll walk from here. Thanks a lot.
Let's get this over with. I know why you're here. You do? How much does she want? Jennifer, how much? What are you talking about? You're gonna make me work for this, right? I knew you were hiding something. So I figured it was the letter. She sent a letter to my wife. If I hadn't seen it first... Del, Del, that's not why I'm here. I am here for my own reasons. I need to ask you some questions about your homecoming dance in 1964. 1964? Homecoming? Are you serious? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, but, uh... I don't really remember anything, except puking my guts out, and my old man finding me and beating me until all I could do was crawl into a corner. Every time he raised his hand, he'd say, you're nothing, Del, nothing. Is your father still alive? Nope. What did he die of? A stroke, real quick. It's too good for the bastard, if you ask me. Does that shock you, sweetheart? Don't go around asking questions if you don't want to hear the answers. Beth, there's no one in her room. Are you sure? I'm not gonna look again. I've got better things to do. She should be back. Coming out of the cold. What happened? Del, I was on my way to my motel. And he stopped me. And he's the one. I don't have a chance. His father died from a stroke. I'm not going to be able to have the operation. I'm not going to be able to. Come sit down. No, I'm fine. Fine. Oh. Oh. Julie. Oh. Julie. Julie. You got to keep looking, Nancy. Uh, try outside of Portland. It's going to take a while. Give me more time. No, there isn't any more time. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye bye. What did she find out? Nothing. No one has seen Matt Saunders since he left Cloverton. No one's ever going to see him. What did the doctor say? <sighs> Just what you'd expect. She wants me home now. But I can't leave until I'm sure. If it's Della... Do you feel up to a visitor? Visitor? doing here? Harold told me everything. Are you okay? So why? What have you found out? Maybe nothing. Maybe a lot. If... What do I call him? My biological father is who I think it is. Well, uh, I'm here, so so tell me, what, what can I do? You can go home and help take care of Megan. She needs you. Uh, and you don't. Julie, I never said it. But I'm sorry. For everything. So what now, uh, I'm just supposed to fall into your arms and pretend that everything's okay? I'm not asking you to pretend anything. I'm asking you to forgive me. I, I made a mistake. I mean, it just happened. No. A one-night stand just happens. An office party affair 
just happened. But when two people plan a weekend and sneak off together and lie about it, it doesn't just happen. You lied to me, Sam. Everybody I love has lied to me. I am trying to hold on to everything, and it's all just falling away. Okay, so maybe for the first time in your life, you're not in complete control. Maybe you actually need me? I'm afraid to trust you. Oh, for God's sake, Julie, you're sick! And I am your husband! Go home, please. Look, I'm not, I don't mean we go back to the way we were, you know? We start small, like this, right now. We... I don't know. Am I looking for something that, that isn't there anymore? We always end up arguing, no matter how we start out. It's over. It's nowhere to go. You scared me. I'm sorry. I heard the music and I followed it. It's beautiful. My father gave it to me for my 16th birthday. I didn't have much jewelry, just some costume stuff. I kept it all in here. I think everything this family ever owned is stored up here. I'm sorry I woke you. It's okay. Mama burned my new dress. I hurt. There was blood. But I knew Mama would be waiting. She told me I had to forget. She started to run a bath. When I was in the water, she said, Thank God your father's not home. He didn't know. Mama said it would kill him. He never found out. No one did. The police? She said they blamed me. And then she scrubbed me until my skin bled.
later she sprinkled perfume on me. I lay there in those white sheets, and I never felt so dirty in all my life. I wrote these letters home while I was waiting for you in Seattle. Your mother didn't stay with you? No. Things were supposed to be normal. Mama got me a wedding ring and told me to wear it. Everything was a lie. In Seattle, I pretended I was Mrs. Look at that ring, and I'd pretend it never happened. Before that night, I hardly ever told a lie. After that night, I hardly ever told the truth. I love Seattle. I hated it there. I'm making some friends in my class. I couldn't have friends. Beth over the flu home once more. That's what she called you, the flu. I've heard other women talk about giving birth. Some have even said, Beth, you're lucky. You never had to feel that kind of pain. I could tell them the truth. Tell them there's worse pain than childbirth. Open my hand. I never. Mama scrubbed me. And I kept my hand closed. Why? Why? My hand. I can remember grabbing at a sleeve. It tore. I was trying to fight. But all I could do was rip and tear. This button belonged to him. After I knew if I let her see what I was holding, she'd burn it. So I held tight. This cloth is green. Can you remember who was wearing a green jacket? I can't.
This is where we went. I took the shortcut home. I haven't been here since. Sue. Sue had a camera. She gave it to the waitress to take a picture. Do you have the picture? No. But Sue would. Well, when Jake and Sue used to go away, I watered their plants. Nothing.
Is this it? Oh, my God. It was Jake. What was Jake? What are you doing here, anyway? You weren't home. There was something we had to see. What? Let us go. We'll talk about it later. Show me. Don't. You said Jake was with you that night. He was. So it was him. You're crazy. I tore this button from the jacket of the person who raped me. I've kept it all these years. He was with me. All the time? We had a fight and then he left. But he went home. I know he went home. No. I would have known. I would have sensed that something was different. So... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can have the operation if you want. No one in his family ever had a stroke. I better go now. Thank you. How you doing? Why don't you come? I can't. You could start over. I'll keep in touch with the hospital, but I'm not going anywhere. I can't. I'll uh, wait in the car, eh? Uh, I'm gonna miss you. Oh. I'd like Megan to have that picture. I know she's already had a wonderful grandma, but I thought she might be curious. I'll tell her all about you. Please come with me. Even through the anesthetic, I heard you. All these years, I remembered your cry. Even though you didn't know it. time you were gone, I was wondering what I'd have to do to get my little girl back. 
I only left town, Dan. I didn't leave you. I was... I was very angry when I went to Cloverton. I was full of questions. I needed answers. Funny thing is, they were all right here. Things you taught me. Dreams you gave me. Beth Thompson gave me life. You gave me love. <laughs> ah, I was going through your mother's things. I came across this book. I found it by her bedside. And, and every time I pick it up, it opens up at the same place. It must have been a favorite poem. Neither flesh of my flesh, nor bone of my bone, but miraculously my own. Never forget for a single minute that you did not grow under my heart, but in it. I loved her so much. Excuse me, but we need to take her now. wondering if we could do something. Sure. But I was wondering if maybe we could start small, like you said, and see what happens from there. Excuse me. I'm to see Julie Lawson. What room is she in, please? Uh, 405, but only families allowed to visit. I'm her mother. 